since we had a tornado warning last week, let's go through where all the safety equipment is. There's the door where you entered. Right next to it, you can see there's a fire extinguisher. You can also see there's chains there. Those chains are used to secure a tank if there's ever a tank over there. Things should always be secured if they are compressed gases uh, because if they fall over, they turn into missiles. And I mean that in the shooting through the air, destroying it in its path sense. We don't have them in this room, but that's where they would go typically. Over in that corner by the door, there's also the power off master switch for the room. If there's ever a major electrical hazard, slap that button and the entire room will shut down. Coming around the room from there, see we have a step stool that is commonly parked over there. Use that whenever you're using readings from the burette. When you have to get up high, don't stand on your step stool. You will fall, you will hurt yourself. I've done it and it's not fun. Right next to it, we have the first aid kit. You can get things to treat yourself there for light injuries. Hopefully we don't need to use that whatsoever. Over here, we have the broken glass for a container. Only broken glass should go into that container. If it has any mercury, it can't go in there. I don't think we have anything in the lab, but if you ever see shiny silver liquid metal, make sure you talk to the faculty before it goes in. You can see that we have a broom here and a dustpan. Generally, the faculty will handle cleaning up broken glassware. To remind us that only broken glass goes in this box, we have a, trail, a tray saying broken glass only. That way we aren't paying the expensive disposal rates for broken glass for paper. So please make sure you use the normal garbage can for paper. Coming along from there, we have our lab safety shower and I wash station by this door to the room. We also have our chemical spill treatment kit. Again, faculty will typically handle that. Uh, if there's a spill and some reason the faculty can't handle that, maybe we're knocked out, you pour the kitty litter around the spill and then over the spill. You'll notice the floor drain and the eyewash station vents right onto the floor to go into the floor, floor drain. You'll also notice that the water tends to be a bit rusty. That will not hurt your eyes more than the sulfuric acid you're trying to rinse out. So just stick your eyes in the eyewash anyway, but we don't play with it just because it'll get the floor pretty wet. If somebody goes to the eyewash station or safety shower, we want someone to go with them because this floor turns very slippery. They'll need somebody to help secure them as they're standing. You can see we have hoods on the side of this lab here, four other hoods on that side of the room. Those hoods are used typically for picking up your supplies. We generally aren't going to do anything in chemistry one that's serious enough that you have to have fume uh, treatments, but this is how we keep the fumes out of your face. When you're using them, make sure that you don't take the glass door above the recommended sash operating height. If you do, it's not pulling enough air through it to keep the fumes from filling the room, but you can take it higher whenever you need to manipulate glassware and uh, not have it knocked out of your hand. This acts as an extra barrier protection as well, along with your lab goggles, but we don't take the lab goggles off even when we're working in the hood because it's supposed to be extra protection. Along this back corner of the room, we have the emergency fire blanket. That's something that's good to use when you can't get to the safety shower, so typically when you're in this corner of the room, or when the chemical reacts with water. Chem 1 won't be using anything that's reactive with water that can't be just treated with the safety shower. So we don't have sodium metal or anything like that that catches fire with water. Coming around the room, far corner of the room, you see right there is the door where you typically come in. We're in this corner. We have a small eyewash station right here as well. Comes out much like the hose you'd use for washing dishes in your sink. When you turn on the water, the orange covers pop open. We store them closed like this to keep stuff out. When we're drying things, we put these on um, onto the drying rack so they don't fall down and break. Lab gloves, sorry, go ahead, are going to be right there in the center of the room and on the opposite side of the same bench. Whenever you need gloves, use them. We have sinks for disposal of only some limited things. Most things have to go into a proper chemical waste, which is right there by the entry door. I'll go over there in just a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing safety relevant on the back wall that I'm seeing other than a clock. So let me come over to here. You can see that we have a waste bottle here. Keep in mind that this is a toilet seat. Don't pour waste on the toilet seat. 
lift the toilet seat before use. When done, close it again. This is where most waste for the lab will go. We'll specify when things can go down the drain instead. That is the quick safety tour of the Chem 1 lab.